Uh, Christina Hartman's up first. Of course, the U.S. government would come in and audit me and my organizations to make sure that I was using that money in the best way possible and in line with the law. So that's my technical auditing experience, let's say, from the other side of the table. Um, but more importantly, as I'm sure most of you know, this is really a leadership and management position. So our current Auditor General, Eugene DePasquale, uh, runs a $38 million budget with many offices around the state of Pennsylvania and a large staff. And I used to manage a $44 million budget with many offices around the world and also a large staff. So very analogous to the leadership and management experience I've had over the past 20 years. Um, and very much the kind of leadership and management experience we can see that government needs right now um, as we're in the middle of this coronavirus um, situation. So, um, and then lastly, you're all political people. So you know that this job is also political in nature. We can have the best of intentions of trying to um, say what we'll do for this office, but until we get through the electoral process, um, we won't be able to do that. So um, just to say that I ran for Congress in 2016, that's the bulk of my political experience. And in that year, which was terrible for Democrats, I actually reduced the Republican margin in my area by five points. We raised $1.25 million in a place where no one thought it was possible. Um, and I tell you about that experience because I think it's the same kind of experience we're going to need in November. I think November is going to be very difficult here in Pennsylvania. Um, the nation's going to be looking to us to turn Pennsylvania blue, both for ourselves and for, for the rest of the nation. And having somebody who has run in a competitive general election, I'm the only candidate that's run in a competitive general election with Trump at the top of the ticket, and who has also brought on independents and moderate Republicans in a difficult year. So um, I think that's the kind of experience we're going to need in addition to having someone qualified and the right leader and manager, but also someone who can help us win in November, bringing women out to vote. I think having a woman on this ticket is very important. We currently have Josh Shapiro and Joe Torcella um, at the top of this ticket who are terrific. And I think having a woman um, from a more rural and suburban part of the state will also help us down ballot um, in you know, making sure that we also flip the legislature at the same time. Lots of important races that'll be going on and we wanna make sure that we're not only keeping this one in democratic hands, but that we're winning over Pennsylvania again for ourselves and the nation. Thank you so much. Two seconds remaining, nicely done. <laughs> All right, uh, well, we have a question in the chat that's very specifically for one of the other candidates. So let's uh, give it a moment, see if we have any hands come up. This is Barbara. I couldn't see a hand come up. I'd like to know something about her campaign, what her campaign strategy is in terms of all the opponents that she has and how she's working on a whole statewide race. This is difficult. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. I appreciate that question. So to date, we've been to 45 of 67 counties, um, and we would have gotten to the last few, but of course, coronavirus has stopped us from doing that. I've been working hard since October um, to make sure that we're reaching everyone across the state and that everybody, whether it's our big cities, our counties, or townships, or boroughs, matter as part of this election. You probably know Lancaster County is actually the fastest growing Democratic registration in the state, along with Cumberland County. Um, so Central Pennsylvania is playing a really key role this year in the 2020 election to make sure that we're making up those 44,000 votes that we lost in 2016. Um, I've won the endorsements of Montgomery County Democrats, which of course, as you know, is the third largest county in the state, um, as well as the Chester County Democrats. And I'm sure you saw in 2017, 2018, and 2019, how suburban voters in Pennsylvania really, really drove the vote and obviously ensured that we got our four congresswomen elected to office. Um, again, we're working in every county, we're working it hard and making sure that we show up um, and that we're listening to voters and we'll continue to do that and prioritize the issues of education, health care, and criminal justice reform, which we believe are most important to Pennsylvanians. Zach, we have time for one more question. Well, let's hear from Mark. He put his hand up. Uh... Chris, Christina, yes, um, I would be interested to hear what areas you would be emphasizing for auditing. Sure. So um, the three areas of focus for our campaign are education, healthcare, and criminal justice reform, because we understand that those are the ones most important to Pennsylvanians. So um, in terms of education, making sure that charter schools are being held accountable to the same standards that public schools are being held to, and that they're not getting extra funding um, in a way that is not 
in alignment with the, the payments that public schools are getting um, in terms of healthcare, looking at Medicare, Medicaid, prescription drug costs, as well as nursing homes. All of that has a state funding element, um, a state funding component to it. And the Auditor General's Office um, can look at those things to make sure uh, that they're in order and that folks are doing right by uh, particularly our seniors and most vulnerable populations. And then lastly, criminal justice reform. So really looking at the Department of Corrections as well as the halfway houses, all of which are funded by your taxpayer dollars um, to make sure that we're not only, um, you know, working hard to make sure that folks are able to get an education and um, to uh, rehabilitate while they're inside our system, but also that they're able to transition to community in the best way possible, as well as to jobs and not reoffend. Um, that not only will save us money, but also I think it's the better thing to do um, in terms of human rights. Well, thank you.